The Tigers went to UMass without a trophy, but they came home with a big one. The Tiger Lacrosse Report, brought to you by the Green Turtle, starts now. For an athlete, there's nothing scarier than a torn ACL. Athletes trust us with their care and their careers because we're a recognized leader in sports medicine. Get back to your active life sooner with MedStar Sports Medicine. White Market's ice cream plant is based in Sunbury, Pennsylvania and locally owned and operated. We've been making our ice cream for nearly 50 years. We create roughly 70 flavors of ice cream right now. We use local ingredients, especially our cream, which is from our milk plant. The cream is what gives our, our ice cream a rich and creamy texture. Now together with our customers, uh, we've created a, a product called Peanut Butter Indulgence, which will be coming out this summer. It's a peanut butter ice cream with sea salt caramel swirl, and chocolate covered pretzel. How could you go wrong with that? Personally, I love our ice cream. If you come to our house at any given time, you'll find at least five packets of ice cream in our freezer. Uh, our kids grew up eating wise quality ice cream, and now we get to treat our grandchildren to it. It's been a pleasure for me to be tasting ice cream for over 40 years for Wise Markets, and I'm loving every minute of it. Welcome to another edition of the Tiger Lacrosse Report. I'm your host, Spiro Marikas, along with the head coach of the Tigers, Sean Madlin. And coach, the Tigers headed up to Amherst, Massachusetts this past week to take on the uh, other three, two of the uh, other three participants in the CAA tournament. You open up against Delaware on Thursday, and that was a game where you were able to build a big lead against the Blue Hens. And Jack McNallan, with a record-setting day with 28 face-off wins, um, just a, a great performance by Jack and a great performance by your offense that game. Yeah, I, it was kind of hand-in-hand, hand, right? You know, Jack getting us all that possession time allowed our guys to get a lot of offensive opportunity. Uh, it took us a while to... To crack the code of, of DeLuca, though, you know, I thought he started the game really strong in the net for Delaware. Um, I got a little worried that, you know, we might not be able to, um, you know, score as easy as we had in the past on him uh, just with how he was playing. But, you know, with all the possessions off the faceoff and the amount of offense that we played, our guys sharpened up and were able to get the ball by him. But Jack obviously had a, had a great day for us. Now, in the first game, UMass played Drexel and the number one seed got beat by the Dragons. Was that something that you could use with your team to say, hey, look, you saw what just happened here. Let's not let it happen to us. We didn't talk about it at all. I'm sure, you know, the guys, when they saw that, they, you know, thoughts might have run through their head. You know, uh, our guys were pretty focused when they got to the game. Um, Coach Chilling rode the bus up with them. We were there watching the, the Drexel UMass game, so we were scouting that. Uh, but he said that the guys were, were pretty teed up and ready to go. Um, you know, not knowing what was going on in that game or, or the outcome yet. So our guys were pretty locked into to playing against Delaware and getting out there and playing hard. So you win that first game against the Blue Hens. Now you take on Drexel on Saturday afternoon. Um, many of the pundits had the Tigers as probably being an at-large bid, but I know you don't want to put anything in the committee's hands. Um, what was the mood of the team going into the game Saturday morning against the Dragons? Uh, similar to Thursday night, you know, the guys had, had great energy, um, you know, at breakfast, great energy on the bus. Uh, they had the music going, but, you know, very, you know, I thought very excited but focused and, um, you know, hungry to get out there and, and play well and play against, obviously, a team that we battled with the week before. And we knew it was kind of back and forth and it was going to be another battle. Um, but uh, the, the mood was, you know, on point. This game different because Jack McNallan did not have the success against Jimmy Coyta Drexel that he did against uh, Delaware. So that put more of an onus on your defense because they had more time on their side of the field. 
but they perform well, and Tyler Canto comes up big again with 17 saves. Yeah, Tyler, you know, really was a, a huge piece for our success on uh, Saturday. Um, facing a high-powered offense that Drexel is, and, and they still were. I mean, they you know put in 14 goals against us. We uh, we had to keep scoring to you know keep that spread. Um, you know, but he did everything in his power to you know keep us in that game and keep the spread that we had. Even though we were losing faceoffs in the first half, I thought our guys did a great job in the middle of the field. Um, you know, not that we were losing faceoffs, we were able to earn the ball back you know we were even though they'd win it you know we'd, we'd create chaos we'd create turnovers and get the ball to our offensive end and our offense really was on point early you know and then uh, filled up the scoreboard and then continued to to do that well through you know two and a half quarters and um, we kind of went stagnant unfortunately in the fourth quarter 16 to 9 lead going into the fourth quarter you had to feel good at that point I mean, when you're when you're in your battle like that and you're in a conference championship game, you know, you don't feel good until that final horn blows and you see your team run out to the field in, in victory, uh, especially facing the high-powered offense that they are, you know, the, the way that they were facing off, um, you know, and then they, they proved that, you know, obviously they could put you on your heels, you know, even though you do have a significant lead going into the fourth quarter and um, it, it wasn't easy, you know. <laughs> it, was a, it was a while before you could kind of, take a deep breath even after the game ended. I guess that's one of those games where there's four minutes left and you keep looking at the clock and it's not moving. Oh man, uh, unbelievable. It is, it's just like, oh, this game just, you know, come on. Where if you're on the other end, keep the clock ticking. never stops, keep right? Keep right, exactly. All right, Brendan Sunday wins the uh, most valuable player of the CAA tournament. Um, he's had a tremendous year for the Tigers. He has, he's, uh, he's done a lot uh, against tough competition. You know, he's really, you know, utilized his, his growth curve over his career here. And this has been uh, a great year for him and a great year for us uh, with him in it. And, um, you know, he needs to continue to, to play the way he is. You know, he's going to garner a lot of attention from the other team's defenses. Um, he's been up to the challenge. You know, he's doing a great job keeping his head up when he dodges if they, you know, they try to, to slide to him fast. And, um, you know, he's exposing matchups when he needs to. So the Tigers, for the fourth time in five years, are CAA Conference champions. Doesn't get old, does it? Never. And they're headed to the NCAA tournament. Tune in later this week when the coach and I will talk about the Tigers' first-round matchup against the Maryland Terrapins. So for the head coach of the Tigers, Sean Nadlin, I'm Spiro Marikas. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of the Tiger Lacrosse Report brought to you by the Green Turtle. And as always, go Tigers.